This first video is going to cover an introduction to MATLAB. Before you continue, you might want to go to the lessons section in Angel and print out a copy of this PowerPoint so you can take notes along with the video. Our objectives here are to introduce MATLAB, understand why this course is a required course, and why MATLAB is the software we're using, and to get an introduction to the MATLAB interface. So what is MATLAB? MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. It was developed in the early 80s, originally written in Fortran. It's a very popular scientific computing tool in science and engineering. It's used for education. That's what we're using it for here. Uh, design optimization. That's, for example, choosing the right dimensions of a bicycle frame such that you optimize the weight and strength numerical modeling and simulation, control system design, so for example developing the control system for the embedded computer that controls your fuel injection in your car, signal processing, so how does how do you develop the software to take the electronic signals coming into your cell phone and produce a voice, and image processing. This is, has a lot of medical applications, for example, with MRIs and CAT scans. MATLAB is a high-level programming language for performing mathematical calculations on a computer. So you'll notice two things here in this statement. One, this is a programming language, so you are going to learn a little bit of computer programming in this class. But one nice thing about MATLAB, in fact, this, this class and the follow-on class, Engineering 240, basically have replaced basic computer programming in most engineering curricula in the state of Washington. One thing about MATLAB that's nice, though, is it's a high-level programming language, which means it handles the basics for you. So MATLAB takes care of memory management in the computer, it, array, it allocates variables dynamically, it compiles as you write it. If you're not familiar with programming, then you might not know what all that means, and that doesn't really matter because since you're living on MATLAB, MATLAB takes care of it for you and you don't have to know what it means. There are some free open source versions of MATLAB. Um, they're Scilab and Octave. They're both very similar to MATLAB. The interface is not quite as easy to use. Um, but they have a lot of the same commands and um, you can actually use those and download those if you want to do homework for this class. There's some competing commercial products, uh, Maple, MathCAD, and Mathematica. Each of these have their strengths. They're also um, good software for doing math on the computer, but MATLAB definitely is the most popular in engineering. Some MATLAB features. MATLAB has a command line interface to use as a calculator or to develop code. We're going to do this first. The first way that we're going to start using MATLAB is basically like a, a really high-powered calculator. Then you can write script M files to save lists of commands and that's actually little computer programs. So we'll start writing computer programs in the second week of this class and in MATLAB we call those script M files. MATLAB also offers powerful plotting and visualization capabilities. We're just going to scratch the surface here in Engineering 120. And thousands of built-in functions for matrix operations, data analysis, solving differential equations, statistics, and a whole lot more. MATLAB also has some debugging tools that help with the scripts, help with those script to M files. And we'll talk more about what is debugging for those of you who have no computer programming exposure. Um, it's just figuring out what's wrong. When your script isn't doing what you think it should be doing, it usually means there's a little problem in your logic or um, something else, and MATLAB has some tools to help figure that out. So why are you taking Engineering 120 with MATLAB? Well, for most of you, you're taking this class because you're required to as a prerequisite for our statics class at Everett Community College or in preparation to take Engineering 240 
apply numerical methods. This is uh, the reason that we use MATLAB is it's versatile and easy to use, which means you can learn it pretty quickly. You're going to be pretty comfortable with MATLAB, I think, by the end of this two credit class in one quarter, so relatively quickly compared to something like Java or C++. It's also very versatile, which means you will um, you can use it for a wide variety of problems and a wide variety of engineering disciplines. It does have a built-in programming language. MATLAB basically is a programming language, and that means you're getting an intro to programming and key concepts like algorithm development. We'll talk about coming up with problem-solving algorithms and program flow and logic, which are all really valuable tools to be learning that are applicable throughout your engineering coursework. MATLAB's widely used in upper division engineering courses at the University of Washington and Washington State University. That's probably the main reason we're using it here. Um, our students have repeatedly reported back to us that they feel pretty well prepared when they show up as juniors at the universities and they already have some good MATLAB background. We use MATLAB in the engineering mechanics sequence, uh, engineering 214 statics, 215 dynamics, and 225 mechanics and materials. We use it for some design and analysis projects that give you a feel for what it's like to do engineering out in industry. So let's finish up this video with a brief introduction to what MATLAB looks like. So we'll talk about the interface here. So when you open up MATLAB for the first time, you'll, you'll see something like this, not with all of the text going on, but this is the default window configuration. We'll talk about each of these windows in succession. We have the command window. This is the command window in red. We have the command history we'll talk about next, that I've circled in green. The workspace window I've circled in blue. And finally, the current folder window, which I've circled in black. So let's talk about each one of these windows by itself. So first, let's look at the command window. This is your main place that you'll be interacting with MATLAB, entering commands. For example, this first command right here, rad equals 5, creates a variable called rad and sets its value to 5. Now we'll talk more about specific commands in a minute, but I just want to go over a few things here. One is you'll notice once we enter that command, then MATLAB outputs the result. In this case, it's basically telling us the same thing we told it. Another thing I want to point out here is the prompt. So this is the command prompt. Yours might look a little bit different. If you're using MATLAB in one of the Everett Community College computer labs, you will just see the two greater than signs. If you are using the student edition of MATLAB, you will see an edu in front of the prompt. Mine shows a trot, shows the word trial in front of a prompt. That's because the way MATLAB works with professors, college professors, is they give us renewing six month trials for our standalone licenses. So the next thing you see in the command window in this example here is some equations. So we have, um, here we're calculating the area of a circle using that radius. Here we're doing it again, changing the radius value, and you'll see the semicolon right here suppresses the output. And the reason we do that often is, just like on the first one when we said radius equals 5, we know what it's doing. It's setting the radius equal to 5. So we don't need to have MATLAB spit that back out at us, so we just put a semicolon there. And then we calculated the area again, this time using a new variable area 2, and we let that one display. Now we did a third time, and I've suppressed the output. This third calculation with the radius equal to 15, I've suppressed the output on both. Notice I've, can, you can enter two commands on one line or three commands on one line separated by semicolons. You can separate them by commas if you don't want to suppress the output. And I've suppressed the output again because 
Just because we're suppressing output doesn't mean it's not doing the work we're asking it to do, which is manipulating these variables. And it keeps track of those in the workspace. And we'll talk about the workspace. You can kind of see the window over here. We'll talk about the workspace here more in a minute. And then I'm using that previous information, those three areas, to calculate the sum of the three areas. One thing you'll notice here with the sum is MATLAB's default scientific notation. So this E, that means 1.0996 times 10 to the third is what you're looking at here. So you'll see that E, that's similar to how I think most of your calculators handle scientific notation. We'll talk a lot more about the command window as we move forward into the next couple videos. So, a little summary about the command window. This is your main area where you'll type commands to do things such as calculating mathematical expressions, executing other MATLAB commands one at a time, or testing out programming ideas before you put them all together in a script. You can scroll through previously executed commands using the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard. You can clear the command window with the CLC command if it just starts getting too cluttered. Or you can suppress output with the semicolon. One other note on the command window is it's not intended to be pretty. So you're not trying to create something that you would print and use to report your data. In MATLAB, our output that we calculate will generally, for that output, what we want to turn in will be either a data file listing numbers that we've calculated or a figure or graph. So the command window is just an interactive console. So don't worry about it when it when you have syntax, when you have errors in the command window, you'll get a red message. We'll see that in the examples here in a, in a few. Um, don't worry too much about that, about keeping it neat. So let's go on to the command history down in the lower right corner of the screen. The command history records everything that you write in the command window. And this is handy because sometimes you're executing similar commands or repeated commands for different variable values like I was in that session that, I show, that I'm showing as an example here. We can transfer commands from the command history to the command window. We can do that by double clicking on a command, then it'll execute immediately. Or we can copy paste the command or click and drag into the command window. When you do that, you still have to hit enter in order to execute the command, so that way you can edit the command. For example, here we have the command area 2 equals pi times radius squared. We can save a lot of typing by just copy pasting that into the window and then just replacing the 2 with that 3 there. One note is clearing the command window with CLC does not clear the command history. Now let's talk about the workspace window. This is an important window because this is where it really keeps track of what's happening with all your variables. So as we're doing things here rad equals 5 for example we keep overriding that variable rad because I said rad equals 5 then rad equals 10 and down low where I've cut off this figure rad equals 15 so we see the current value of the variable rad in the workspace is 15 and that I've kept overriding in contrast the variable area I've given it I've made it different variables area 1 area 2 area 3 so we've created three different variables and recall when I did area 3, I suppressed the output, but it's still there in the workspace, and really it's what's happening in the workspace is what really matters, because that's the value of variables for using them later on in further calculations. The last window that we see is the current folder window. That's on the left side of the screen. The current folder window is basically kind of like Windows Explorer, and that's showing which directory on your computer MATLAB is looking in right now. So here we see a variety of files, um, actually from another class that I teach. And what we see there is for the M files, which are MATLAB scripts, 
Those are script m files. Here we have this one final grade is selected and notice it gives us a little bit of information about what's going on with that file. And that file loads a grade data file and determines final numeric grades. It just gives us the first little bit. These come from the help comments. And just keep that in mind because as we start writing script files we want to pay attention to those help comments because it helps us keep all our files organized and know what everything's doing without ha having to open up all the files. So just to summarize about the MATLAB interface, we talked about four main windows. The command window, that's your main interaction with MATLAB. You type commands here at the command prompt. Just put the cursor at the prompt and type. The command history records all our previous commands. It's convenient to click and drag previous commands into the command window if we're executing them again or making minor edits. The workspace keeps track of all the variables and that's where it really matters in terms of what the values of the variables are. Recall in the example here we've overwritten the variable rad three times so we need to keep track in the workspace what its actual value is. And then the current folder is where MATLAB is looking for files. And that concludes our first video.